everyone and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial. It's been so so long since the last one but I am so so happy to bring you another beginner friendly painting. And as you can see from the title it might be slightly inspired by my sad face watching all the Eras tour videos and trying not to cry from not seeing Taylor live. For that reason I got inspired to create a lavender haze scenery with of course my usual misty twist. One little quick announcement, by the end of June I will be back on my Patreon page where you can find the real-time process of this video and many more videos and also, spoiler alert, my monthly bullet journal kits are coming back and uh, I'm so so excited to be back on creating more for you and yeah, but more on this later on. Today I will be trying out some new products from Grabby. Grabby is a really nice and affordable brand with many art supplies, focused mainly in my favorite medium, a watercolor, with many color palettes, brushes like this set of three professional squirrel fine brushes that I will be using to create all the details on the painting and also they have 100% cotton paper. I was really surprised by the paper since the texture was so so close to the high-end artsy's cold press paper I'm always using having this noticeable but soft and small grain feeling. For the watercolors, I will be using this 100 watercolor palette including 50 regular colors, 35 metallic, 5 fluorescent and 10 macaron pastel colors, all of them being non-toxic. The colors come in this thin type of case, which feels really portable and nice and safe to carry. Also, I just love the old retro metallic look that it has and the closing mechanism, it's really taking me back to a craftsman's little magical box. The set also comes with a little box containing extras and this swatch card, made of the same really nice paper I showed you before. So. When you're creating your swatches, you're getting a real feeling of how these colors will look on paper. It has all the names written and little boxes perfectly sized and folded to be placed into the metallic box so you can always have it with you while you need to pick colors. Inside the white box, there are three water brushes and even though it is really nice to have and really useful, I don't actually usually prefer to use this type of brush since till now I cannot seem to get the accuracy and the line control I need for my paintings. I've been so excited throughout the whole unboxing to finally open up the case and see the colors. A plastic seat protects the colors from its side that I guess it could also be used as a blending guard on the go if you need a place to just quickly mix some colors. And here they are. Out of the box, everything looks so so beautiful and vibrant. This palette seemed absolutely perfect for this painting, considering all the beautiful pastels and metallic variations of violet and blue colors it has, and even having the perfectly mixed lavender color. Before we start the painting, I need to create all my swatches and have a first feeling of how the colors behave. As you can already see, even though the boxes are quite small, the brush gave me the exact control I needed. It kept its form while being soft at the belly and firm at the tip, making filling these little boxes really easy and fun. The colors were super easy to activate and even though the whole palette is on the affordable side, they didn't feel, you know, kind of cheap and chalky or like they were missing on the quality. I am always a bit skeptical with palettes having so many colors, but truly I would recommend this palette. There are so many beautiful things you can create with it. Having the opportunity to test out a lot of shades and experiment with watercolors without being afraid of ruining anything as a beginner, because also you get the chance to, you know, have pre-mixed colors if you don't know much about mixing. But also, as a professional artist, I can see myself using this for a lot of thumbnails and even my actual paintings. The 50 regular colors were super vibrant and saturated, while the metallic ones were very subtle, almost like a desaturated version of the regular ones. 
with not a lot of sparkle, they just had this really soft sheen of metallic effect, which can actually be a really good thing since they can be regularly used as a toned down option giving transparency and a glass feeling to your paintings. Especially, I have to admit, I really loved that right down corner with these nine beautiful earthy tone metallics. Now, slowly starting off with our tutorial portion, as you have seen in my previous scenery tutorials, I tend to use a limited color palette to create the mystical and blended look. Using a limited color palette is beginner friendly and it just makes it easier to focus on the feeling you want to capture while creating this type of paintings that mostly rely on water and a lot of layers and blending everything together to create the feeling of a fuzzy sweet memory. So I went right into and started to create a mini swatch card with the colors I wanted for my limited color palette. Of course, when the process of painting begins, I can mix them up and create even more colors and just see what I need as I go. But to me, it's super helpful to see beforehand what some colors look next to each other. The main colors I will be using are Brilliant Green Purple, Visandine, Dark Purple, Black, Dark Green. Now, the Grabby 100% cotton paper pad is A5 size. It's exactly the size of paper I'm always using in my tutorials because I believe it's not too big to need big brush strokes or too small to add details. So yeah, the final piece has everything I was intending. Now, as you can see, I'm barely marking more than a half of the height of the paper for the sky and then the rest for our lavender haze field but that doesn't really matter in the process, it just helps me out to start the painting. And finally, we have the first layer of paint. I'm using Brilliant Green Purple for the sky. After wetting the top part of the paper, I start to slowly load my brush with color and create a very soft layer. Then I continue by taking more color and starting to dab the brush on the paper in the shape of a cloud. Honestly, to create these clouds, it's super easy. As you can see, I'm tapping my brush, spreading the color in a cloudy shape and what really helps out is concentrating a bit more color in some spots, making them darker and that will make the cloud look more fluffy and have contrast. It is totally okay to take your time, you don't have to get everything right in the first layer. As you can see, I'm slowly building the depth. I'm adding a really soft touch to the rest of the paper, like the corners and then slowly to the bottom and when I want everything to be smoothed out, I move my brush horizontally blending the water with the paper. I have to admit the brush really helps a lot. This type of brushes keep a lot of water in their belly, having a firm tip to control the placement. As you can see, I am still adding new layer on top to make the clouds even darker. I believe the trick for beautiful fluffy clouds is to create the first layers on a more wet paper, so the paint can spread and fade out the edges, and while the paper is drying, and we are slowly adding more color and contrast, our placement becomes more specific while giving depth and volume to the clouds. One trick I always love to make my paintings have this moody feeling is mix a bit of a toned down brown or green to desaturate some parts of the painting and make it look even more realistic. That's the reason why I'm placing a bit of dark brown and a mix of blue more close to the corners of the painting where the focal point of the center is starting to go away and fade out. Also, whenever you feel like you're losing your cloud, you can always lift the color from the paper, creating highlights and bringing back some light spots you might have lost. You can lift color when your paper is wet by simply swiping with your clean brass or if your paper is dry, you can wet your brush and then softly wet and swipe the part you want to lift. Now, as you can see, I am starting to create the horizon by simply adding horizontal strokes and blending more of the brilliant purple. And 
and I'm adding a bit of indigo blue into the mix for saturation. And yes, I'm using a hair dryer because if I didn't, I would be here forever. Moving on, I am starting the lavender field. The color I'm using is Visandine and there is nothing specific that I'm doing or in the shapes I'm choosing. I am thinking of how lavender fields look and then try to mark down spots. I want the Visandine color to stay vibrant. In other words, as you will see later on, in order to create the contrast of the lavender into the field, I need to use the negative space technique where I will paint around the lavender with a dark green black color to make their shape appear. So firstly, I am placing purple very loosely. And now with a very dark green I am painting around, separating the flowers and adding depth. Honestly, do not stress it at all, the placement at the end doesn't play that big of a role. Since we are trying to capture the feeling of a lavender haze misty scenery and not the exact shape of lavenders. I keep mixing dark purple and visadine and start to give shape to lavenders by making their straight branch and then creating round shapes across their vertical body. For the part closer to the horizon, everything gets smaller and smaller, so even less details. And I'm just focusing on creating the texture. Just like if you would squeeze your eyes and you were trying to see a lavender field in front of you. So basically just small lines like little grasses and again round shapes. I continue to build the field with the same technique of using dark green and purple by tapping round shapes or by making grass-like brush strokes. One thing that is very important is to choose a stroke direction. As you can see my lower part, all the strokes kind of go right way, while on the top right part of the field the strokes go to the left. So keep in mind to have sections where your strokes have direction like they are in the same group to give the feeling of a field like the grasses on a hill or slope. Remember the flowers closer to you are bigger and more clear 
while further away everything loses detail and becomes either small lines or dots. Now this is the part where I add the first misty layer by wetting my brush to smooth out upward the harsh line of the field. I know it might seem like I'm ruining what I did, but as I mentioned in all my misty tutorials, I believe this is the most fun part, where I get to trust the beauty of watercolors by blending layers together and letting the water do its job. Again, I'm wetting my brush and with a soft circular and horizontal move, I'm fading out the horizon line and also wetting again and blurring out part of the lavender field, letting the dark colors get mixed with the purple. In order for the horizon to not feel too forced, I'm bringing the purple upwards by slightly tapping or even creating small round shapes. I keep doing the same thing and when I feel like I'm losing too much detail, I come back and add some lines. Always remember for the best misty effect, you have to wet the horizon and bring it up quite a bit to the sky to make sure there are not any visible seams. After everything is dry, I'm adding one more layer of details to bring back some of the texture while again doing simple lines and round shapes. For a little bit of highlights, I use the Uniball white gel pen, but you can also just use some white acrylic or gloss. I create really small and tiny white details, and by keeping your touches small and tiny is what makes this look even more realistic. Considering how far away the field is and the perspective of the painting, adding really tiny details is the correct scale to keep the field looking realistic. And if you feel like the whites are too much, you can always add a bit more color on top of them and just blur them out. And we are almost done, the most part of the painting is done and dry and as you can see I'm having my moment by peeling away the tape and having that clean border. Now many of you can just leave it as it is and you still have a beautiful lavender haze misty scenery but I needed to go the extra step and let the magic of the gold touches happen and I truly believe this gave it exactly what I thought it needed. I'm using the gold ink by Winsory Newton with a small dip pen and I'm just creating simple tiny thin hairlines. I cannot tell you how satisfying it is to see the gold on top of all the beautiful dark mixture of purple. I'm following the same rule, making lines on the back small and including bigger ones on the front closer to me. This painting is about capturing a feeling so there is nothing specific you need to do. Have fun adding little lines and scratches all over the place. I even brought the gold metallic lines up in the sky because I felt like they needed to be there, like there was some type of wind and brought the magic up 
on the clouds. This was the painting guys, I really really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you can see my reference from Taylor Swift, Lavender Haze. I hope that I capture the Lavender Haze feeling that I have in my mind when I say these words. And yeah, I cannot wait to see everything you create. Your creations are always so amazing. I am blown away by your talent. So make sure to tag me on Instagram at Kaleopiliviaki so I can see everything. And yeah, I am so excited to be finally back on my Patreon. Starting by the end of June, you will be able to find many rewards and support me if you are able and want to, of course. Your presence here is more than enough. With a comment or a like, you help me so, so much and it's actually free. So no worries if you cannot be on my Patreon. But there I will be uploading more tutorials and have a real-time process like this video so you can see every stroke in real time and many more. Also videos on my personal art and my techniques and paint with me videos while also my monthly bullet journal kits that you can print out or use digitally. I am so so happy to be back, thank you for everyone that has been here even when I wasn't. I am still struggling a lot with stress and anxiety but I'm working on delivering everything that I haven't and I'm just excited to be here with you. I will have everything linked in the description box if you're interested in being part of my Patreon family or even if you are curious about what I'm using today, materials and other stuff. If any of you would like to give this little painting a home, the original Lavender Haze Misty Scenery will be up on my Etsy shop. Thank you so much for being here. If you like this video, you can always hit the like button and even subscribe for more. And yeah, till next time, have a super duper day. Bye!